It's still plus politics. Now, the presidential tickets for the African Democratic Congress ADC party for the 2023 general elections was picked by Dumebi Kachiku. Kachiku emerged the overall winner with 978 votes ahead of the former deputy governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Kingsley Mogalu, who polled 589 votes. And Chukuka Moye scored 339 votes. Kachiku promised a purposeful leadership to rescue the country from the current challenges facing it. The ADC candidate will be contesting the 2023 presidential election, elections alongside former Vice President Atikwa Bubaka of the PDP, Bola Ahmed Tinubu of the All Progressive Congress APC, and former Anambra State Governor Peter Albi of the Labour Party. Well, joining us to discuss uh, this and more is Kunle Lawal, he's the Executive Director of the Electoral College of Nigeria and Ufo Maegbamuna, he's the head of news uh, in Nigeria Info FM 99.3. It's good to have you gentlemen join us in the studio. Hi, hi, uh, Marianne. I'm, <laughs> I'm not sure why you decided to bring myself and Kunle. Um, but anyway, <laughs> it's good to be here. Kunle, it's good to have you join us. Um, it's a pleasure always, Marianne, and of course, it's a pleasure to be with Ufo I know this. Let me start with you um, because... Um, one would have thought that um, with the kind of clout, let, let me use that word loosely here, that a, a Kingsley Mogalu who has this, who, who, this is not his first rodeo at this presidential um, ticket thing, and, and, and a, um, a, a, a Chukuka Moye who also seemed to have garnered some favor uh, from Nigerians, uh, seemed to have polled lesser votes um, as against a uh, Dumebi who people barely really know, we don't even know if he really campaigned, he had that much media exposure. And so it leaves a lot of people wondering what exactly transpired at the ADC uh, presidential primaries. Okay, so um, with the information made available to me, I'll try to make a little bit, a few things clear. So um, the ADC, of course, adopted an intelligent move which was to, uh, that every, in every, um, Elect, uh, primaries being held, everyone was going to pull resources together, and those resources would form a jackpot in which delegates would be transported. We agreed to this at national level, and the truth is, this actions even come up from the Lagos gubernatorial Gobernat uh, primaries, which had the same problem. So um, they pulled these resources together, but of course, on the day of the primaries, a few bend downs happened. Um, I would like to say Lagos uh, gubernatorial primaries too was played like that. So there's even a voice note which yeah, we have. Uh, uh, there was access to which I overheard with, with some people that um, you know um, an aspirant, the one that won on both sides, were actually um, canvassing, uh, raising funds for delegates. Um, I think in the Lagos issue, there were even um, people that were made members and delegates on the same day. I, I, I'm not sure whether that happened in the presidential primaries. But it seems to become a set of things. ADC simply forgot to go to the political party and freedom of association. The first person to bring them into limelight, of course, was King Simogalu when he was running for president. And then with Moye coming also, with Kweve Kamonye coming into the game too, and then a few other aspirants, Figuaya, Dele, ETC, the game was now choked up. And somewhere down the line, there might be a pest from nowhere, less than it gets, it clinches the form, pulls the average move. So we can effectively say, Primaries in a few parties have been the same. And is, um, I, okay, their name is ADC, but I think in their primaries they practiced an ADG, any dollar goes. Thank you. Wow. Um, I mean, <laughs> because there are rumors when these kinds of uh, events take place, you hear that these things are dollarized. And, and for a small party, um, using the word small loosely here, um, like the ADC, one would think that there would be pure internal party democracy, um, being that parties like this are striving not to be like the two major political parties. But uh, from what Kunle is saying, that might not necessarily be the case. Why do you think that is? Um, it just shows you how much um, the country has deteriorated, uh, not just in the last seven years, but you could argue um, since in independence. Um, that's why stomach infrastructure would always work in most parts. That's why um, most polit politicians believe that, you know, all they need to do is wait for you on election day at different polling units, mm -hmm. you know, and buy your votes with the 1,000 naira, 2,000 naira, or 3,000 naira allegedly that they usually sell. 
Um, but at the end of the day, it also tells you that um, the move by the National Assembly, if you remember, uh, just a few months ago when they were working on the Electoral Act 2022, they actually wanted it to be um, indirect primaries. That's what they initially put out. Um, but of course, you, you would argue that um, constitutionally that doesn't necessarily work because it, it doesn't give everybody room or people freedom of choice. Mm -hmm. And so that's why the president, uh, you know, decided not to agree and asked them to go back and, you know, add other forms. But coming back to the ADC issue, yes, there are um, allegations. Um, we possibly do not have facts to back it up right now. But, you know, they say from every iota of rumors, there's some possibly atom of truth. Mm -hmm. And, of course, when these things... It, it's sad that, um, reportedly... Um, these delegates we are bought with as low as a hundred dollars. You know, when the major parties were allegedly sharing 10, 15, 20, That's I even hear as much as fifty thousand um, dollars allegedly, um, the ADC reportedly some of these delegates, you know, um, got just a hundred dollars. That's give or take about fifty, sixty thousand there or thereabout, you know, and voted. Um, the eventual winner. Again, mm -hmm. all of these are allegations. We do not have facts um, to back it up. But it, it, it just sums up um, where the country is headed, mm -hmm. you know, such that these persons, because of course, you remember, it's not the general election. Yes, this, this is, is just, just primary. It's just a small circle. Mm -hmm. So um, all of your popularity really doesn't come into play. Because again, if I go back to the major political parties, that you could argue that there are a number of politicians in the major political parties who possibly would have gotten um, the nod of their parties. But did they have enough war chest? Well, the answer is staring at you. Um, Kune, I'm back to you because um, one of the things that the Electoral College, that I understand the Electoral College is trying to do is to move away from the norm and educate people not just political parties now, but people, uh, the average voter, uh, you know, about how we can have freer and fairer, you know, elections. But how do we even start to talk about these things if the political parties themselves do not necessarily believe in this free, fair, you know, process? Now, let's take, for example, like the normal man would say that, oh, we have, you know, um, not credible people in these parties. These people are corrupt, allegedly. Um, but then the people who are members of these political parties are Nigerians. They're not from Mars. So obviously, and these people who call themselves delegates who allegedly take these monies are also Nigerians. Does that not also reflect uh, that we, the people, have come to be okay with that modus operandi? Or am I wrong? So um, the Electoral College, of course, um, has worked closely with the that I'm not saying in the past. Uh, we work closely, we work with every other political party. And, you know, to have been part of primaries and see the kind of things we've got to see. You know, the ABC, we even thought, you know, had um, a, a, a different ideology. They called themselves third force, which, of course, um, they thought or assumed that they were a little different. But you know, to, to, to hear allegations of people receiving $5 then when they voted and then received $95 is quite depressing. The Electoral College has worked with the ADC, tried to train a few, even tried to send some of our, 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 our graduated associates to the ADC for grooming within the party. And I, I, you know, from what I've seen, I think we'd rather just keep our students, our, our associates at home. But anyway, going on to, you know, the issues within uh, all other political parties and the ADC inclusive. You know, why the ADC comes as a surprise is because you find out that the basis of which we now understand clearly, because this is the first election year the Electoral College is going to, we have now found out that the buffet of corruption is actually being spiced, eaten, and cooked by the middle class. So, of course, if the middle class is in direction and say they are not, because a price tag have, has not been put on their head, as we've seen on the case of the ADC. I remember when King Simogalo and Chukwema Moye joined was such a big thing. They were so happy they were attracting clout. And the moment um, the former PDP guy bust in the, in the game, it, it became, you know, game as usual. So I, I find it a little, a little sad that the ADC didn't take or, or its, its neck or and its members do not take value above status quo of things. I think as, as I've, I've won the primaries and I've been part of conducting about four or five, and I'll tell you that if you were at that level as a party, what you should have done is direct primaries and not an indirect primaries, mm. and thereby for 
fine delegates. Now, this is what the Electoral College finds most complacent. In what congresses which were held in Oyo State and Lagos State by the ABC, you didn't have an attendance of up to 100. Then how the hell in the primaries or gubernatorial in Lagos, you have over 500 and in a, what they call it, in a, in a presidential primaries, do you have close to 1,000? It's, it's highly depressing. Hmm. Well, for Matt, because we don't have time, I'm going to toss this question to you. There seemed to be so much hope, um, to borrow his word, ginger, you know, that we were having newcomers, especially for the ADC. They had at some point a lot of presidential aspirants, and one would have thought that it would have been, you know, a very good way to see democracy work inside that party, but that's not the case right now. Um, do you see a lot of crisscrossing from the ADC? Do you see people moving away because of what has happened and the outcome of the elections? And, and looking at, um, do maybe, does he stand a chance? Um, to be very honest with you, I try not to, um, I try not to reduce people's chances, you know, um, even I can, I can tell them privately, you know, <clears throat> excuse me, but I try not to do that maybe publicly uh, because of course I'm supposed to be unbiased and all of that as a journalist. Mm. Um, but I remember telling one of the presidential aspirants um, in 2018, uh, talking about um, Sowery, he came to uh, our office, by the way, in Port Harcourt, and you know, I told one of his aides, please stop kidding around, you're not going to win this thing, let's, let's not even joke. Um, but one way or the other, I've also realized that you don't want to reduce, you know, the efforts other people are putting into the picture. Are they going to go away? Well, I think I saw Chukum, uh, Chukum, uh, what's his name, Monye, mm -hmm. um, earlier today, put out a tweet, just two words, Peter Obi, those two words. Uh, make of that what you, um, what um, you wish would. for mm -hmm. for the ADs for the uh, Kings of the Mongalu. I think um, I, I saw his um, comments, you know, suggesting that for now he doesn't know where what he's going to do. He's going to take his time, you know, before reacting to this this loss. But I think we have a third force. I think we have an option that people are already looking at. Um, you. People, I've seen a lot of persons say, oh, it's just online, it's just on Twitter. But trust me, there is a third force. And if you do not take a certain Peter Obi in the Labour Party seriously, well, maybe you might, um, you might just about be taking him seriously. Because even the two major political parties, the PDP and the APC, are looking at him and wondering, wow, what is going on? And I was hoping that there would be another, I mean, because there's so many third forces and we're seeing a Kwankwaso on the other end. Yes, of course. Kwan 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 is another, another powerful force. Maybe might not do so much in the southern part of the country, but Kanu, Jigawa, and a couple of the states in the north, well, he's definitely going to pull some weight. Well, uh, we'll keep our fingers crossed and keep watching these stories as they develop. Um, Kune Lawal is the executive director of the Electoral College of Nigeria and Ufo Maigbamuna is the head of news Nigeria Info FM 99.3 here in Lagos. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Thank you for, for having me. part of the conversation. All right. Well, thank you all for staying with us. That's the show tonight. We will round off the show this uh, today with our weekly highlights. So we give you an idea of what we've been discussing all through the week. Post Politics returns on Monday. I am Mary Anacone. and have a great weekend. Y'all better have a great weekend. Senator Tinubu, or that, however we want to call it, has been building this over time. If you check it, how many people has he helped to get into office? There are countless people. Do you expect these people to turn their backs on him? So the mode of primaries that APC chose favored him, or when I, I don't know how they chose him, but there is no way based on the capacity he's been building for him to get to lose this. Because pretty much everybody there, one way or the other, has benefited from his generosity or from his politics or from his guidance, however you want to look at it. And there is no way. I wasn't even surprised. For me, at the end of the day, you could say, if you were looking at social media a few days back, you might think others had a chance. But if you understood politics, there is no way. I would say that uh... Frankly, I would rather the scholar Tinubu withdraws from the contest and allow the vice president. Why? Uh, my reasons are profound. Bola uh, Tinubu, as he was himself, is practically too old, weary, and tired 
for the enormous responsibility of keeps in resetting and reworking Nigeria. And that is why it becomes very difficult for the supporters of the vice president to make him step down. The truth is that from the southwest, uh, the candidacy of the vice president is more attractive to people across the nation. Uh, beyond the fact that that's why I did the political figure and the phenomenon. When you um, in spite of you know the sentiment about rotation, you know, between the north and the south and what have you, uh, we must remember that at the end of the day. The people that are involved in all of these calculations, you know, um, and strategizing and all of that are politicians. And to them, the overriding interest is their own interest first. So, you know, um, as the emergence of Atiku, uh, Alaji Atiku Abubaka was more about which of the candidates those politicians felt to the greatest chance of defeating an incumbent government, you know, regardless of whichever candidate that that incumbent government or incumbent party eventually presents, you know. So, um, in the in the in the eyes of of the delegates and what have you, they felt that whether regardless of the zoning arrangement, people stood the biggest chance. That's not to say, you know, that without prejudice to the very uh, show show of shame that we saw with how money became, also became a major factor. Well, facing out uh, the politicians is not the best. Uh, the old politicians are still mentioned. You see, this time around, people have to look at the track record of all the politicians that are aspiring to uh, go into positions, especially the executive uh, arm of government, because that is uh, probably the most important uh, arm of government out of the three. Because if you get that one right, other two are certainly going to be uh, good also. So um, um, I think that's what to prepare. We don't, uh, this is not the time really for us to go and start any experiment. Uh, some of the young men and women that we have seen taking power, especially at state level, some of them were a huge disappointment. Uh, people.